This is the first in a 10 module series about trauma that was developed for all school staff, general and special education teachers, paraprofessionals, secretaries, administrators, custodians, lunchroom staff, after school staff, and others. The modules will help you develop a trauma informed perspective that will guide your practices and interactions with students. You will better understand how trauma affects people and how you can help students and others who have experienced trauma. The series was created by staff of Student Services, Positive Behavior Support Team, and Media of the Madison Metropolitan School District in Madison, Wisconsin. Its goal is to integrate trauma-informed practices into our schools to minimize the negative impact of trauma and help traumatized individuals to heal and to do their best academically, socially, and emotionally. Whether you are a teacher, an administrator, or another individual who comes into contact with students, we know you are busy juggling many things every day. This training is not about adding new interventions to tasks on your already busy schedule. It's not really about individualized intensive interventions at all. Those fall outside the scope of this training. This training will help you broaden and deepen your understanding about individuals who have experienced trauma. The new insights you gain will allow you to make changes in how you go about your work rather than adding more to your already full plate. And we believe your new perspective will make a positive difference for all children. What is this all about? This training is about shifting our perspective, about seeing student behavior through a trauma-informed lens, and about understanding how trauma affects individuals. All modules will include ways that each of you can do your work with children in such a manner as to minimize the effects of trauma, reduce re-traumatization, and support students as they learn and grow. Why is this important? We know trauma affects a sizable number of our students, and also many staff, yet it is often unrecognized. Having a safe, non-punitive school community makes a positive difference for trauma survivors. How will we do it? As you, the school staff, collectively integrate the information on trauma into your daily interactions with others, the community within your school will experience positive changes. With trauma, small is the new big. Small shifts in our interactions make a big difference. The benefits of small changes in our practices will result in larger changes as they ripple throughout the school and system. Over the next few months, we will cover these topics. The focus will be on the important elements of trauma-informed care. These elements are relevant in many arenas. Health care, social services, the justice system, communities and families, as well as schools. While the concepts are the same, we will focus on education with examples, practices, and strategies that relate specifically to the school environment. According to Elizabeth Hudson, trauma-informed care consultant at Wisconsin's Department of Health Services, trauma is a somewhat confusing term because it can mean both the event and the subsequent experience. The traumatic event results in feelings of helplessness, vulnerability, and fear. It overwhelms the individual's ability to cope, leading to many far-reaching consequences. An important thing to remember about trauma is that it is highly subjective. I could tell you that I was in a car accident, or was sexually assaulted, or I lived through a tornado. By just giving you that information, you wouldn't know whether I was traumatized, because it is actually how I and others around me deal with those situations in the aftermath of events that would determine if I was traumatized. Consider children in your school or classroom. What experiences on the slide may have affected your students? 
take a moment to think about this. You will be able to share your thoughts after the module is completed. Because trauma is subjective, many experiences may cause trauma, but a particular experience will not cause trauma for all children experiencing it. There is an interaction between the child's inner coping mechanisms and the intensity, length, and chronicity of the child's experience and the external supports available to the child. Often we are unaware of the early lives of our students and of the out-of-school experiences they have had. So often we are unaware of who has experienced trauma. We don't really need to know exactly what has happened and to whom it has happened. Based upon data from a multitude of sources, we know many of our students have experienced events or living environments that might result in trauma. We also know if we modify our practices by becoming more trauma-informed, this will be beneficial for all students and especially beneficial for those who have experienced trauma. How common is trauma? We know from a study of over 17,000 people by the Centers for Disease Control that adverse experiences during childhood are common and often result in later trauma effects. 78% of those surveyed had one or more adverse childhood experiences. 16% had four or more types of adverse experiences during childhood. In the Madison schools, since 2005, sixth grade students have participated in self-report screenings for symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Across the district, 10 to 15 percent of sixth graders, based upon self-report, have significant symptoms of PTSD associated with experiencing or witnessing violence. What might a traumatized student look like to you? Here are some ways that students may present who have experienced trauma. Do any children you know come to mind? One reason that trauma goes unrecognized is the symptoms resulting from trauma are similar to many other mental health disorders and trauma often results in a variety of confusing and concerning behaviors. For example, trauma may result in hypervigilance, the continual scanning of the environment for danger. What we observe is distractibility, attention problems, constant movement and activity, much of what we also see in ADHD or it may result in a need to distract oneself from internal discomfort. This need to distract from internal discomfort may also result in such behaviors as alcohol and drug use, early and unprotected sex, delinquency, and other risk-taking behaviors. One reason that trauma goes unrecognized is that symptoms resulting from trauma are similar to many other mental health disorders and trauma often results in a variety of confusing and concerning behaviors that may seem unrelated to trauma. Stressors like discrimination, poverty, community violence, and homelessness may serve to undermine a child's solid foundation and security in the world. These exacerbate the effects of trauma, increasing the severity or duration of symptoms. These factors also increase the risk that a child may develop symptoms after a trauma experience and make it more difficult for parents to provide safety and security. Relationships and protective buffers ameliorate effects of trauma. You may be one of the most important buffers for children you know because of the quality of your relationship with them and how frequently you are able to interact. You can make a difference for students being steady and consistent helps the child to feel secure. Listening to the child, understanding the child's point of view, and empathizing helps them to feel valued, safe, and understood. 
you may be surprised at all that you already do in the course of your day to support students who have experienced trauma, creating a classroom community that is safe and predictable, implementing best practices of responsive classrooms or developmental design, checking in on the emotional state of your more vulnerable students through morning community circle activities, and taking care of your own physical and emotional needs. If you want to learn more about identifying signs of trauma, how trauma affects behavior and learning, and things you can do to help students, this set of short training modules will provide practical information about those topics. You are already on your way to becoming trauma-informed. If you are interested in watching these modules with a group or individually, they will also be made available on the District Mental Health website. In addition, your MMSD facilitator will provide you with a list of websites, books, and articles that you can use to become more informed about this important topic.